Hi, and welcome back. So if you watch the channel, you'll know that in December of 2022, I had a blood test. I've now used those blood test results to do a biological age test. It's my 43 month point of the experiment. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what our biological age is now, 43 months into my NMN experiment. Let's quickly look at the supplements I was taking at the time of my last blood test. Nicotinamide mononucleotide, 1.5 grams per day. Trans resveratrol, 1.5 grams a day. And that's on Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. Uh, those are the days I do not train. TMG, trimethylglycine, 1.5 grams a day. Metformin, 500 milligrams a day. And I now take that at night after my evening meal before going to bed. Vitamin D3. 5,000 international units a day and 10,000 on a Sunday and a Wednesday. Vitamin K2, 120 micrograms per day, and that's the MK7 version. Magnesium, 250 milligrams per day, L3 and 8 version. High molecular weight hyaluronic acid, 200 milligrams per day. Fisetin, 2.4 grams per day, but again, remember, only in the first, second and third of each month. Cursed in the same, 2.5 grams a day, first, second, and third of each month. Aspirin, 81 milligrams per day. The CERT-6 activator, 800 milligrams a day. And DIM, 600 milligrams a day. And that's 200 in the morning, 200 at lunchtime, and 200 in the evening after my evening meal, around about the same time as I take my metformin. So this is the website. It's uh, longevityadvantage.com. The last time I used this was in October 2022, and I'll leave a link to this website in the description below. To use this, you need to have had a blood test. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll see the 10 markers that they want. They want albumin, creatinine, glucose, C-reactive protein, lymphocyte, mean cell volume, that's your blood, uh, red cell distribution width, again, the blood cells, alkaline phosphate, white blood cell count, and also your age. So last time I had this done, which was um, in October 2022, my chronological age, you can see it was 58 and six months. That's the amount of birthdays I've had. It came back with my phenotypic age is 53.60 years. And I'm going to put up now what phenotypic means. And my phenotypic age versus my birth or my chronological age then was minus 4.40 years. My DNA methylation age in October came back at 52.80 years. And my DNA methylation versus my chronological age comes back as minus 0.20 years. Now, these are the results for December 2022. So the last set I had done, chronological age still 58. Phenotypic age this time down to 50.38 years. My phenotypic age versus my chronological age is minus 7.62. That's a reduction in age of about seven years and seven months, give or take. My DNA methylation age, you can see here, is now 49.70 years. And my DNA methylation versus my chronological or my birth age is minus 8.30 years, a reduction of around eight years and three months, give or take. Now, I know these are only a snapshot, but both my phenotypic age versus my chronological age and my DNA methylation age versus my birth age have both improved since the last time. My current phenotypic age and DNA methylation age, as per this website, have me roughly between seven and a half and eight years younger than my actual or my chronological birth age. So that's it for longevityadvantage.com. Let's move on to another site now. Moving on, let's take a look at biologicalage.com. Um, now, I show you this page because even if you can't get a blood test, this is a way that you can gauge to a certain degree your epigenetic age. And again, I'll leave a link in the description below to this particular website. Uh, it's fairly easy to use. Um, they've updated it quite a lot since I far first started using it. You click through now and you just answer a series of questions. First one on uh, your age. So I was born in 1964. Then where you live in the world. Uh, type of education and then you carry on through these series of questions until you get to the end and then they tell you what your um, tell you what your epigenetic age is uh, this question here how many units of alcohol do you consume a day well it's, it either gives you none or one drink a day I only drink maybe one or two a week so I could say none because I don't drink every day but what I tend to do is click on one drink per day 
which I'm guessing is going to make my epigenetic age older. Well, that's a good thing because it's going to spur me on to, to trying to get it down. So continue through this until um, you've answered all the questions. Now, in October 2022, when I was 58 and six months, it said I was 48. So 10 years younger. And that's good. Uh, you can see here the last time I took the test on the 10th of December 2022, I was 58 and eight months. It tells me I was 49. So around nine years younger. That's great. Um, not as accurate, I don't think, as the one that actually uses your blood markers. So I'm three months older than the test in October. Or I was when I took the test in December. Uh, my biological age has increased by one year. This is obviously, as I said, not as accurate as the algorithm you normally get. And it gives you some very genetic statements as well. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, which I kind of agree with. But depends when you eat breakfast. I eat mine at noon. They're talking about eating as soon as you get up. Eat at least five servings of fruit and vegetables a day. Again, a well-known mantra. Lots of conflicting evidence now coming out as to the um, veracity of that statement. Uh, eating highly refined and deep fat foods should be a sometimes treat and should only be eaten occasionally. I agree with that 100%. And do push-ups every day. And again, that's not bad advice. If you can't do push-ups, sit-ups or air squats will suffice. So that's it for biologicalage.com. You can use this if you can't get um, a blood test. So at the time of this test, my chronological age or my birth age was 58 and eight months. Uh, longevity advantage had my DNA methylation or my biological age, if you like, at 49.70 years. So just over eight years younger than my calendar age. The less accurate biologicalage.com, they had me at 49, which is nine years younger. I think we can all agree that the DNA methylation test, one that uses blood samples, such as the Horvath clock, is going to be far more accurate. However, I would avoid companies like epiage.com, who only test against less than 20 markers. Look for companies that test against hundreds of thousands of markers um, for a more accurate and a far more cost-effective option. Um, and if you approach the company and send a message and they don't reply with the answer, Answer, they're probably not testing against that many and they are probably ripping you off. Here in the UAE, I still can't send blood or saliva through the post, so I've got to rely on these online tests. That said, uh, stay tuned. Uh, it looks like I may be retiring sometime this year to the Philippines, uh, where I'll hopefully be able to send blood and saliva samples through the post, so I'll get a more accurate uh, assessment of my methylation or my DNA methylation age. So on these three monthly updates, I cover in detail my previous test and the current test with regard to my age. Quite a few people have asked if I can show the overall progress of the tests I've taken because new subscribers don't want to go back and watch all the videos. I, I understand that. So I've made this spreadsheet. You can see here that the blue line represents my um, my birthdays and they will always keep going up. The red line represents my DNA methylation age as from longevityadvantage.com. Um, you can see at this stage in the experiment, there's a definite distance or a gap between my birth age and my DNA methylation age or my biological age, if you like. Uh, and you can see the last test I had shows quite a steep drop off with my biological age. And I'm now eight years younger than my my birth or my chronological age. This is the kind of graph I'm looking for. This is one I wouldn't want to be looking for, which is where my um, biological age is in red and my chronological age is in blue. And as the years roll on, you can see that my body is actually getting older than my birthdays, which is, if you think about it, the opposite to healthy aging. So you can see on this test, and I will update this every time I do these in three months, since January 2021, I've had five tests, and you can see that's the progress that I've made so far. So as I said, I will update this overall graph as well as the uh, the three monthly tests roll on well i hope you found that interesting or informative hopefully both um if you've had a blood test done recently jump onto longevity advantage do their test and see if you can find out what your biological or your epigenetic age is as well as your phenotypic age if you can't do a blood test for one of many reasons then have a look at biologicalage.com you can't lie with a blood test you can lie on biologicalage.com i urge you to tell the truth about body type sleep etc diet um if you lie on that it comes with a good it uh, comes back with a good result you're only really cheating yourself so my age now has dropped eight years where before it was between four and five now it's dropped down to between seven and eight the only thing i've really changed in the last three to four months is that i've been consistently taking 500 milligrams of metformin let me know in the comments below if you think that is the reason i've gone back because it was such a stark uh, change um, I've gone back and looked at my blood test results. 
there's not really anything that's changed fundamentally. So I'm wondering what the algorithm has picked up that's dropped my biological age down by between seven and eight years. Or do you think it's just an outlier, an, an error in the algorithm? And the next time I do the test in three months, it'll go back up to being four to five years younger than my uh, biological age. I'd be interested to see what you think about my latest biological age test.